Good afternoon, and thank all of you for being here today. This is without a doubt one of the very, <clears throat> excuse me one of the very best programs that we get to do, because we are honoring the star students from eight schools. We will also be honoring our system winner. I want to welcome all of you on behalf of the Rotary Club of Douglas County. This is my 24th year to be able to MC this particular program. And the format of the program is that I introduce the star teacher. The star teacher explains what has made the star student their star student. And the uh, student comes up. The student will then introduce parents, administrators, and anyone else that's visiting with us today. And I want our students to tell us, first of all, what their plans are with regard to their career and where they plan to go and pursue their education. We'll have some time for questions at the end, and we will also have a group photo. I'll ask you to stay up here if you are the star teacher, if you're the administrator, the uh, parents, because we want to make individual uh, group pictures of each of the schools in addition to a large group picture at the end. But we are very fortunate today. We are going to take advantage of all of our media, so we will be broadcasting on uh, the Douglas County television. So I want to make sure that all of you use the microphone and please speak up. I'm going to begin by asking Mr. Jess Davison from Alexander High School to join me. Hi, um, my name is Jeff Davis from Alexander High School. Our star student is Katie Gamble. And one of the things that makes, helped make her star student is her drive. And she demonstrated that the very first time I met her. She showed up as eighth grader at freshman orientation, came up to me and said, Mr. Davison, I want to skip honors biology and go straight into honors chemistry. I told her no, but looking back at it, I'm pretty sure she could have handled it. So the, Katie Gamble. to represent Alexander High School today. I'm thankful for my family for their unconditional love and support throughout my high school career. I'm also thankful for the Douglas County School System teachers that have um, supported me throughout this journey. After graduation, I plan on attending the University of Georgia to major in biochemistry and molecular biology. I will then attend medical school where I will study to become a pediatric oncologist with a specialization in brain tumor research and treatment. Um, when I found out that I was a star student, I knew immediately that I wanted to choose Mr. Davison as my teacher. I had Mr. Davison for both honors chemistry and advanced placement chemistry. He's an exceptional teacher who challenged me academically, nurtured my love for science, and helped me discover my passion. It is because of his encouragement that I volunteer at Eggleston's Children's Hospital, where I get to see how science, courage, and compassion come together to provide hope and healing. Mr. Davison believed in me and taught me to believe in myself, and I will forever be grateful for the impact he has left on my life. I have my mother and my father with me, Barry and Sherry Gamble. I have um, our principal, Mr. Han, and my boyfriend, Ryan Leak. And Vada, you back here? You want to come on up?
want to take a moment and welcome our superintendent of schools, Gordon Prince, and I also want to welcome Pam Nail on behalf of the school system as our chief academic officer. So if you would stand please and be recognized. We are going to now uh, move to the Chapel Hill High School. At this time, I'm going to invite Mr. Zach Cooper to come up and to introduce Kayla McLean. All right, over the past uh, couple of weeks, I'm sure that I've done what just about everybody in this room has done, and that's set in front of a notepad wondering exactly what I was gonna say about a student who is by far one of the most awe-inspiring people I have taught or met in my career. What do I say about a young lady who is a member of NHS and the Beta Club, the vice president of HOSA, the president of the SGA, the editor-in-chief of the yearbook, yet still dedicates time to Relay for Life and the Red Cross, volunteers at the women's shelter once per month and attends mission trips to Haiti in her summers? How do I adequately describe a student who works at Chick-fil-A after school, cheers on the varsity competition team, organizes almost all student-led events on our campus, yet has won academic achievement awards in every core subject area and worked to attain one of, if not the highest GPA in our school. You know, I hear people comment from time to time about the inspirational role that teachers play in the lives of our students. And if people truly knew teaching, they would understand that in the most meaningful of situations, this role is actually reversed. I've come to learn that every so often in our careers, we are lucky enough as educators to have a student walk into our classroom who becomes our own inspiration. And Kayla McLean is exactly that, an inspiration and a motivation to those lucky enough to have taught or coached her. She propels those around her not only to be better versions of themselves, but also to then help others in the same vein. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what the details were the first day she walked into my class, Although, if my memory is close, she probably, or it probably involved a sparkly cheerleader bow on her backpack, a red Ohio State shirt, which, thank goodness, has since been replaced with another red shirt, but this time with the letters U, G, and A on it. <laughs> but regardless, I will never forget the day she walked into my classroom and asked, will you be my star teacher? All in all, I don't know that I would ever be able to adequately describe all the wonderful things that Kayla does or is. But I do know that our community, our school, our teachers, and our student body is incredibly blessed to have students like Kayla walking our hallways, and I am greatly honored to be standing here presenting her today. So, since I can't think of better ones, in response to her being named Chapel Hill High School's star student, I will end by saying the same words I use time and time again in reaction to her writings in my class or witnessing her many achievements. Well done, young lady. I am incredibly proud of you. Um, good morning. I'm Kayla McLean from Chapel Hill High School. Uh, regarding my future plans, I'm excited to be attending the University of Georgia to study athletic training, then attend medical school and to become a phys physical therapist. When I was told I was the star student for Chapel Hill, I was extremely excited and I immediately knew I was going to pick Coach Cooper as my star teacher. He taught me last year in AP language. I remember walking in on the first day, and one of the first things he said was that this class will be the hardest English class we've ever taken, and maybe ever will take. I'm pretty sure he said all of this to sound scary and to scare a few of the kids, but he wasn't wrong. This class ended up being like none other. I felt the most pressured and highly expected to do well, and which pushed me to do my best work. Coach Cooper has managed to transform good students into exceptional writers. Not only is he a great English teacher, but he also carries himself in a way in which the students respect and truly look up to him. For me, the standard that he had created in his classroom made me want to succeed. I couldn't just settle with a high B on an essay. I wanted that 9, that 100. But he didn't give them away easy. And when I got my first one, I don't know if I've ever been so happy about a grade, because that means that he really liked my writing. Maybe he was even proud of it. Outside of academics, Coach Cooper truly cares about his students. He asked for sports schedules so he could come watch. He even came to a competition cheerleading showcase because he taught me and a few of the girls on the team. 
He has made it a point to connect with each student individually. He even played as my cornhole partner with me at our holiday cornhole tournament. Even though I was no good, he still made us matching t-shirts, and it was a lot of fun. There is no doubt that he has made a great impact with every student he comes across, which is why I chose him to be my star teacher. Thank you. Um, I have my mom, Trisha McLean, and dad, Scott McLean, and my principal, Dr. Kelly. With me. I also want to take a moment and recognize Charles Clark and Glenn Clark for all the work they did in getting these framed. So Charles and Glenn, are you here? And Charles is here with, it has the design center here in town. Also would like for James Harper to stand and for Gail Shearhouse to stand because these are the people here from the Rotary Club that have made certain that the certificates got printed, they got framed, they got here in time to be presented to you because it is a big production to get all of the work done to have all of you here. So would you join me in thanking those Rotary members for their contributions? We are now moving to Colonial Hills Christian School and I want to invite another star teacher returning to us as star teacher, Miss Debbie Hicks, to come up and introduce Lee Annette Phillips. Thank you. <clears throat> Leah Phillips is a leader in our school, homecoming queen because she's very popular. A beautiful smile lights up her face most of the time. She's a great friend to her peers and role model to the younger students. On the volleyball and basketball courts, she is a very selfless player who knows the games well and works well with the team. <clears throat> she can be counted on to be in her place and do what she's expected to do. She also has been a cheerleader co-captain for many years who would write cheers for the squad and lead the girls who would lead the crowd. She'd leave the basketball court, change to her cheering outfit, and give it her best for the next game. She has come to my class late afternoon to ask if there's anything I need help with. Even though we're a Christian school, that's pretty unusual. She gets along with all adults very well. Academically, she is the third in a line of sisters who always stood out. She can be counted on to have studied hard and will make the top grade. I was disappointed the last couple years I didn't even get to teach her because she took dual enrollment. But that's what the top students do, and I'm, I have the, you know, the rest of them. Um, <clears throat> Leah is one of our most well-rounded students in our high school, and I appreciate her, and I appreciate her parents and their support to our school over the years, and this is the last of the Phillips family, and we're going to miss them so much. Leah Phillips. Good afternoon. My name is Leah Phillips, and I attend Colonial Hills Christian School. My guests today are my wonderful parents, Leonard and Marlissa Phillips, as well as Ms. Hicks, and my headmaster, Mr. Hicks. Um, after college, I, after high school, I'm sorry, I plan to attend Mercy University and major in biology on the pre-med pre track. After undergraduate, I would like to attend medical school, where I will study to become a hematologist. 
I chose Ms. Tix as my star teacher because of her drive, perseverance, and her commitment to a higher standard. She always pushes her students um, to a higher standard, and she may red mark all over your paper, but it's just because she's trying to push you to become a better reader, a better writer, a better overall thinker, and I appreciate her so much for that. Um, I haven't been able to take her the last couple of years, but the courses I'm taking now, I'm doing so well on them only because she gave me my fundamental skills to become a great writer. writer. So thank you, Ms. Tix. We are now going to honor Harvester Christian Academy, and I will invite Mrs. Barbara Delosier to join us to honor Jay Hun Lee. I would like to thank the Rotary Club for having us and for this um, annual event. So an honor to give honor to our students, and so I thank you for that. Jay Lee is a remarkable young man. He is a well-rounded, self-motivated, and inquisitive individual with admirable goals. I first got to know Jay as a player and discovered his tremendous skill and his passion for the game. A talented musician. He has a rich voice and he's an accomplished oboist. During the fall, Jay was in both my world history and U.S. history classes. Due to his family's goals, early in the semester I discovered he needed to finish both subjects in one semester. It takes a great deal of self-motivation and perseverance to complete such a task as Jay did without complaint and with excellence. It was also during that time that I discovered Jay's inquisitive nature. Not being a native of the United States, he has a different perspective of history. He challenged me to examine concepts and events in a new light and be able to explain what most of our students take for granted. Lastly, I find Jay's um, aspirations to return to South Korea and help reform the education system there most admirable. How exciting it is to be a part of this young man's journey as he studies here in the United States to bring back his knowledge and experience to benefit his own country. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jay Lee. I'm Jay Lee, and I'm from Harvest Christian Academy, and yeah. <sighs> As Mr. Loger said, I have a passion for education reform in Korean high school, um, and Mr. Loger um, has inspired me to um, think about those more critically, and her ways of teaching led me to think about how education should be, because in Korea, there are lots of um, students 
who are going through hard times because of the um, the pressure and stuff. So, so. I think she's a great teacher. Thank you. Um, I'm not, I haven't decided yet to go to which school, like which college. Um, but I think I'm going to major in chemistry or in education. Um, and there are Mr. Slater, Ms. Slater. And I'm staying with them as an international student, and they're my host family. And here's Mr. Lozier, and I think that's it. Welcome. Being the mother of a tech grad, I just had to get that one in. <laughs> it is my privilege at this time to honor Airway Christian Academy, and we will ask Mrs. Mary Ashlock to come up and introduce us to Rebecca Lewis. It has been my delight to have been Rebecca's English and Spanish teacher for the last several years. And as such, I've had the opportunity to observe her ability to analyze the structures of another language, her skills in interpreting text, and especially to I've learned to appreciate her writing skills. In fact, in two weeks, she will be representing Airway at a literary competition in the area of argumentative writing. Being able to observe her academic skills for the past several years, it's no surprise to me that she is winning this award today. However, I have also enjoyed watching her use all of these skills in other areas of her life. There are some qualities that I really value in Rebecca that I see in another Rebecca who lived in Old Testament times. To summarize that story, Abraham had sent his servant to find a wife for his son. When the servant meets Rebecca after the long journey, he asks her for a drink of water, and she says, of course, I can do that, and I'll also make sure that your camels get water. We are told that he was journeying with 10 camels, and it's my understanding that after a long trip in the desert, a camel can drink up to 250 gallons of water. So what in the world is that? How does Rebecca embody this characteristic since, as far as I know, she's never had an up-close-and-personal experience with a camel? <laughs> well, she is not afraid of hard work, and she is willing to go way beyond what is expected of her, and she always does it with that spirit of kindness. Many people can get a job done, but they kind of run over you in the process. But whether it is uh, on the volleyball court, whether it's as a member of the cheerleading team organizing a successful blood drive, or Operation Christmas Child, or using her writing skills as she did recently to draft a proposal for a policy for our school for the use of electronics in the high school, presenting it and having it approved by the board and then helping to implement that policy I have seen her work hard, get the job done, and always do it with kindness. After Abraham's servant had asked permission of her family to take her back to his country for Isaac, they said yes, but they asked that she be given an opportunity to stay at home for a while to get used to the idea. But when they asked her, 
If she was ready to go, she said, of course, without any delay, showing her spirit of adventure and her willingness to face uh, the future challenges. I know that Rebecca is ready for the challenge of college, and I am so very excited to see what God does in her life and what she will achieve in the future. So it is with great pride that I present to you Airway Star student, Ms. Rebecca Lewis. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm from Airway Christian Academy. I haven't quite decided where I'm going to go yet as after, after I graduate from high school. I'm deciding between West Georgia and also Georgia College. They have great nursing programs and that's what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting to go into nursing. Um, I picked Ms. Ashlock to be my star, my star teacher because not only is she an amazing teacher, she's also a great mentor. She pushes us inside the classroom and then outside the classroom she helps us, she gives us advice, she cares about us learning and she cares about us and any issue we have. So she's an amazing person just overall. Um, today I brought with me my mom, Sherry Lewis, my principal, Mr. Thomas, and Mary Ashlock, my star teacher. Thank you. Rebecca, both of my alma maters have fine nursing programs, Georgia College and State University in Milledgeville, and GSU downtown. <laughs> Got to get in all my plugs while I'm here. <laughs> At this time, we're going to honor New Manchester High School. It's hard to believe that we have had New Manchester High School here long enough that we are now doing the star students. It's amazing how fast the time passes. I would like to invite Mr. Eric Mulkey back so that he can introduce Chassie Locke. Good afternoon. Chassie Locke is a star student for all the expected reasons. She works hard, she values education, she seeks personal growth. She makes the people around her better, both teachers and students. And one day she'll take her talents out into the world and add something substantial to it for the benefit of everyone in here today. She checks all the expected boxes for a star student. However, when I think about Chasey, even though I think about those above listed qualities, I initially think about something else. I think about the time I made Chasey cry. Sorry, Chasey. <laughs> and as we all know, crying isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if done for the right reasons. So was this a moment a right reason to cry? Or was it just too much to bear in the way that I shared the beauty of literature? Had I inspired her through my poetic revelations about the nature of a life well lived? No, unfortunately, none of the above. And one of my worst moments as a human, I made Chasey cry when I implied she may not graduate college because of a comma error. Here was this precious child who had never been in trouble and ranked at the top of her class, and I, like a true monster, drew into question her entire future over something that really wasn't important then or now. <laughs> if you're curious, she forgot a comma in one of her complex sentences. Our English teachers will appreciate the, the horror. <laughs> Horrified at my own realization of what was happening, I immediately apologized, and thankfully, to the best of my knowledge, Chasey never held a grudge or complained to administrators. But I, also <laughs> but I also think she understood the challenge that I clumsily presented that day and accepted it anyway because she never wavered in her work, despite how difficult I tried to make it for her. She always embraced my nitpicking and challenges, especially the comma-related ones, headfirst, 
never stopping for a moment to rest. And I think her ultimate validation in dealing, dealing with me came over the summer when she received her AP Lang exam score. Needless to say, English won't be a concern for her next year in college. And beyond my own classroom, simply as one human being to the next who has shared time and space with Chasey, she inspires me. I consider myself someone who appreciates and actively learns new things whenever possible. But Chasey makes me realize that those are often just words when I consider her involvement and engagement in practically everything academic and artistic in New Manchester. She weaves in and out of calculus and literature like they're two sides of the same coin. And it's not unusual to find Chasey in an art studio the day before traveling cross state to study and practice physics with the best of her peers. At this point in her life, she's had a hand in everything and she's proof that one can be practiced and skilled at anything they choose. She's talented, she's driven, and she's well-rounded. She's New Manchester's 2017 star student, Chasey Locke. Hello. Um, I actually forgot about the crying thing until just now. <laughs> um, so I plan to attend Georgia Tech next year and major in biomedical engineering. And Mr. Mulkey has just, I actually didn't prepare a speech, so I'm just gonna tell you what I think about Mr. Mulkey. Um, he's a teacher that you can joke with and have fun and then still be able to go to his class and sit down and focus and know what you're supposed to be doing. And my writing skills have improved to a point that I didn't think was possible before I met Mr. Mulkey. And um, I now know how to use commas, which is great. And um, he, if I have any kind of essay for any scholarship or when I submitted my application to Georgia Tech, he's always the first person that I email it to to read over and give me any critiques about it because I know that he, everything he does for me is just because he wants me to improve. Um, and he's just so well known throughout me and my friends that we know that we can go to him and joke and go after school and um, get any kind of help or anything that we need from him. And this is his second year that he's been star, star teacher of the year. So I think that that just proves how well of a teacher he is. So. And today I have with me my mom, Robin, and Miss Morris, which is the college and career specialist at New Manchester. Well, for the second time in 24 years, we actually have a tie for system winner from two different schools. So I just have arbitrarily assigned the order we're going to do them in because I can't bring them both up here at the same time. At this point, we are going to recognize the Douglas County High School star student and star teacher. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Shea St. John to come up and introduce Erica Bresner. To say that I was impressed by Erica the first time I ever met her would be um, a complete understatement. Anyone who comes out of eighth grade reading Charlotte Bronte and Leo Tolstoy in her own time is um, quite an anachronism. She's clearly, I hate to say young lady ahead of her time, she's a lady ahead of her time. 
and this transfers to every area of her life. I can say, if there's a club at our school, she's a member. If there's a leadership position, she holds it. If there's a competition, she's won it. <laughs> That's who Erica is. She's maintained a 4-0 average first in her class while taking the most rigorous curriculum in existence. And she's done it with poise and relative ease, which is highly impressive. In addition to all that, she's a second degree black belt in Taekwondo, so she kicks Fanny in all areas of life. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's also achieved something that many of us as adults have worked hard to achieve, and that's that she's learned not to take herself so seriously. And that gives her room. It gives her room to grow. It gives her room to excel. And whenever she, she combines that passion with her success and drive, there are no limits in Erica's world. Um, I'd like to say I wish her the most success, but I think that's the easiest part. That's the easiest part for Erica. I wish something more for her. Success is easy. So what I want for her is I want happiness and success. Because without happiness, success doesn't, doesn't amount to much. So congratulations, Erica Bresner. I wish I had paid more attention in public speaking class, but <laughs> here we are. Um, you asked about my future plans. So after finishing IB, I'll go to UGA. Um, I was recently awarded the Bernard Ramsey Scholarship there, and recipients of that will compete for the, high, the highest honor at UGA, which is the Foundation Fellowship. So competing for that in two weeks from now. So good luck to me. <laughs> Oh, um, I'm not actually sure what I'm going to do yet, but I hope to get a scholarship this summer to study in China. Anyway, um, I knew immediately that I would choose Mrs. St. John. I cannot thank you enough for being my mentor throughout high school. You've done so much for me as a student and as a person, whether it be helping me get into the Governor's Honors Program or being so kind as to help me with my extended essay, even though I wrote the bulk of that 16-page paper in one night. In class two, you never stopped pushing us as literature students. I appreciate that you respect the fact that you teach a college level class and teach and treat us as such. At GHP, I was able to take classes similar to those taught in real college, and a lot of it was actually very similar to what you do in real life. Besides that, thank you for instilling an appreciation of Ayn Rand and a large knowledge of rather obscure Russian literature in me. But outside of school too, you've been a wonderful mentor. I know that I can come to you with any problem and receive real advice that is actually useful. It, is, it really is kind of a weird time in our lives as young adults, full of mood swings and caught between near autonomy, yet still living with our parents and following the rigid structure of high school. Still, you never fail to treat the students who respect you with an equal amount of respect and goodwill. So for all of this and more, I sincerely thank you. And uh, I have my mom here with me, and my principal, Mr. Andre Weaver, and then Ms. Sabrina Ellison-Brown, our counselor. Thank you. 
And now from Lithia Springs High School, our other system winner, our star teacher is Mr. Keenan Lee, who will be introducing Brandon Lindstrom. Good afternoon. First off, I want to give thanks to Brandon for thinking enough of me to select me as his star teacher. I really do appreciate it. Brandon Lindstrom has been pretty much a rock star at Lithia Springs High School. An administrator at our school, Dr. Lee Collins, stated to me that he's, quote, glad that he's here at Lithia and he's exceptional in every way. His friends think of him as someone who, quote, exceeds every anything he concentrates on and puts his mind to. His AP computer science instructor says that, quote, he's a self-directed learner, and when he wants to learn more, he seeks out information with little guidance and goes over and beyond what's required. And for me, teaching him AP Calculus BC and post-AP Engineering Calculus has been the absolute highlight of my career. He often tells me that I push and challenge him in my class, but, but what he really doesn't know is that he has been the one student that has pushed and challenged me the most out of my career. I literally study like every night. <laughs> Just <laughs> her. And although we are here because he has earned the highest SAT score at Lithia Springs, and now we know the district, he is also an extraordinary student in other ways. Brandon and I work closely together to help the Lithia Springs community. He and I have formed a partnership with Leadership Douglas to create and maintain a food pantry in the high school to help serve the poor and needy in the community. In addition, Brandon has developed an app to manage the operations of the community food pantry and help sustain our efforts even after he graduates. He's creating a future leg legacy for other students through service. Brandon, I'm extremely, I am extremely proud of you and all your academic achievements at Lithia Springs High School. But I'm also just as proud of you for your humbling character. I can't wait to see what your future brings for you at Georgia Tech. Keep being an awesome person. Ladies and gentlemen, Timothy Brandon Lindstrom. nothing prepared. Just gonna let you guys know that right now. And I also don't like microphones. So <laughs> terrified. But I can't speak of Mr. Lee just off the top of my head. The one thing that comes to my mind when I think of Mr. Lee is competition. I know it sounds weird, but I never really pushed myself to be competitive. I've never really liked competition. I've never really liked, you know, competing with my peers, I guess. And throughout Mr. Lee's class, there's always been on the wall, top score and class average. And then right below the class average, there's all the names of the students that get A's and B's and on the test. And I've always strived to get the star next to my name, which means there's 100. And I've never gotten it. It's always been a 99 on this test. <laughs> and that's how I know that Mr. Lee is the teacher that challenges me. I've never had a better teacher and a, a better mentor in, in mathematics. And, in life. So thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, I plan to go to Georgia Tech for computer engineering. And after I graduate, I hope to open up my own computer hardware firm. And I hope to develop the, the future of computer electronics. So I'm here with my, my father, Tim, and my mother, Carol, and my principal, Dr. Askew. Thank you.
Many years ago, the Rotary Club of East Point presented me with a leadership award and challenged me to come back home and to use my leadership skills in my community. And today, as the eight most outstanding young people in our county, the best and the brightest, I challenge you to do the same. I want you to understand that it is important for you as you are going through your career to look around at the people that are here, to look at your family, to look at your friends, to look at your educators, and know that when you need to sound off and discuss what your options are, these are the people who will always be there for you and be willing to guide you in your career choices and in very hard decisions that you have to make in the course of your lifetime. I also want you to understand that for many people, we don't have just one career, we have series of careers. And that's certainly different from the way things were 20, 30, 40 years ago. So certainly learning flexibility is important. But the most important thing that you can do in your life is to find your passion. Because when you find your passion in life, opportunities will open for you. You will do things that you love. And when you do what you love every day, it doesn't seem like work. And that's the reason that our STAR teachers are, in fact, STAR teachers. They have found their passion, which is educating young people, and they love it, and they do it day after day, class after class. And that blesses our students and also our community. So this is one of the things that we in Rotary do to support our community and to encourage our young people. We have done very well today with our scheduling, so I'm going to ask our eight teachers and our eight students to come up. And you have a few minutes among the audience to be able to ask them some questions before we need to take the group picture. So come on up, please. And President.